you've got to have a memory of what threatened you in the past so you can avoid it in the future. And so talking about memory, one of the kings of memory is the Clark's Nutcracker. Uh, bird in America that gets you know, 30 something thousand seeds and buries them in 7,000 roughly mm. different locations and then can go back and find those 7,000 locations again in winter when times are bad. And they've done the experiment where they looked at a Clark's Nutcracker and it's buried uh, somewhere and there's a, a tree and a park bench. And what they did was when the bird has gone away, they go quick in there with a shovel and they shift the tree and a park bench one metre that way, and they take a photograph of it before and after. Mm. And when the bird comes back six months later, it says, oh, tree, park bench, and it starts digging oh, the one metre... That's, ro- that's cruel! <laughs> but that proves... Proves that, that it's memory, not a, a sense-related. No. It, 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 so it, it can have 7,000 of these individual block memories. You know, so I don't know how... It, classifies them by number or whatever, but it can find each of 7,000 yeah, treasure troves of seeds. OK, so that's a, a smart bird, if you like. That's a smart bird. What about your, your goldfish sitting in the bowl? OK, so the experiment has been done with fish where they were had some fish, the first experiment, they had some fish that were mm, a bit endangered. And so what they did was they grew them in a laboratory and then they thought, well, we're growing them in a laboratory, but we want to help them survive in the wild and they won't know where to go. Let's teach them to come to a sound and then later we'll go out to sea and we'll play that sound, come to us and they'll head out in the open sea and then hopefully they'll at least have got away from the shore and they survived that. And then... A second experiment was done where they got some fish and they had them in a tank and here's the tank and they scared the fish. They got a net and they put it in at one end and they ran it through the tank slowly, sort of forcing the fish up to the other end. It was a fairly big tank. And there was a hole in the middle Mm -hmm. and the fish was going, oh, my God, I'm being pushed around by this net. Oh, there's a hole here. And they went into the hole and out the other side and they were safe. Eleven months later or one-third of that fish's lifetime later, they did the same experiment, and this time the fish went, oh, that net, here I go, straight from the middle and out the other side. So the fish could remember. OK, so we're talking about um, like a third of their, their lifetime then. They live around three years? Yeah. Well, the, the goldfish have been around for 3,000 years and there's about 125 species and the yeah. Chinese have bred them to be huge things and little things and all sorts of things. But, and depending, that you can live for three years or so, yeah. Well, nonetheless, it's pretty impressive. We talk about a third of our lifetime would be roughly around 30 years then yeah. to have that memory So that one long. thing happens to you and then 30 years later, three decades later, yeah. you remember. So to say that fish, the goldfish have got no memory or that it lasts for three seconds, it's just... It's a furphy. Totally, well... Yeah. What about other fish, though? And would it be related to the intelligence or the size of the brain? I mean, obviously, goldfish ah. would have very, very small brains, given the size of the fish themselves. But then you sort of go up the scale to, like, a shark, mm-hmm. which would have a reasonable sized brain. Ah. Don't know, because um, there's different parts of the brain. There's the uh, basic brain, the brain stem, which deals with things like breathe, have the heart rate going... Are you food, in which case I'll eat you, or mm. are you a threat, in which case I'll take off on the other end? And then you work your way up through the brain to the sensory and the motor things until finally you end up with the forebrain, which we have, but the apes don't have, and we show our obvious superiority to them by having poetry, income tax, weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> etc., like that. Yeah, who's the smarter one? Well, right, so therefore the smarter one. So getting back to the fish and, and most animals, in general, a lot of their brain is used in running the body. Mm. So the bigger the fish, the bigger the brain. But certainly with the fish, we know that they have at least what they call an associative memory. So the goldfish can be singing in the the tank or swimming around. It goes, oh, human coming to the tank and looking at me. Last time this happened, uh, I got some food. So I'll go there and do some tricks. So they associate the human or the presence of a person Mm. with with food. food. And Mm. then they have social memory. Like um, my mate over there whenever humans come along, goes over to the side of the tank. So I'll do what my mate is going. I'll, do, I'll have social memory. I'll copy my fellow goldfish. Hey, look at that. I'm getting food from heaven. Thank you, God. And then the third one is that they can actually remember uh, music. 
so they can tell the difference between blues, John Lee Hooker, and classical music, and then later on, and they'll behave differently for each one, and they can even hear music that is a different piece of music but still blues, or a different piece of music but still classical, and say, oh, oh uh, mate, last time you played me Mozart, and, and look, I like the Beethoven, but I really prefer Mozart, and they can, they can classify the music. So to say about goldfish that they have only a three-second memory and the, no other brain function is being really unfair. So, so what's the moral of this story? Treat your goldfish well, because they will remember. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Dr. Carl, thank you very much. Thank you.